Hi everyone, Mary here, and we're going to talk a little bit about Introduction to Online Astronomy. Um, this is the second video, and in this one I want to give you a tour of our course itself. Now if you go to the home page, this is what this home page is going to look like. And on this, of course, there is a picture of me, uh, my contact information, my office phone, my email information, and some documents that people are going to want all the time. Um, a copy of our syllabus, our schedule, and then the lab equipment list. And I want to spend a little time talking about that. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to watch the first video about grading information and points. And when I'm done making this video, I'm going to slide it in right here. Now after you've kind of gone to this page, um, let's take a look at these documents a little bit, and I've preloaded them to make them a little bit easier. Um, the syllabus itself is one of those things that we are required to have for every one of our courses. Mine is a big beast, it's six pages long, and it goes through lots and lots of the grading details. It has a picture of our uh, textbook. It has pictures of the planisphere, um, a suggested calculator that you might want if you don't want to use the one on your phone, which is absolutely fine, and then some more information about time commitment or rigor and some of the things I talked about in that first video. You do not need to print the syllabus, but there is a copy there for your edification if you want that later. So that is just for your use. Now if you go back to the first page, one of the other things that's here is our schedule. I highly recommend that you print the schedule. Um, the due dates will be in the course itself, but me, I like having a paper schedule because I just adore crossing things out when I have them done. It makes me feel very accomplished. In the first week of our course, everything is going to be due. I like having consistent due dates so that you can rely on it. And I, per, at the moment, I use Midnight Sunday as a good due date for most everything, um, except there's going to be one strange due date and that is an introductory discussion. And in a totally online course, it is important that we spend a few minutes getting to know each other. So the first introductory discussion is going to be midnight on the first Thursday, and then I'm going to ask you to reply to two classmates by midnight Sunday. That's the only thing that has an odd due date, except for when you go to the very, very end of the semester, the final final exam and the final study guide and observation project, these things are going to be due the last day of the semester, whatever day that falls, and that's going to vary from semester to semester and whether you're taking the course spring, summer, winter, or fall. Now another thing that's available on that first page is the lab equipment list. These are at-home labs. Now because this, these are labs that you're doing at home, I have invented these. This is a combination of stuff you're going to do in your kitchen or in your backyard. And we're also going to use an awful lot of simulations. I've tried to make the labs use common equipment. So for example, here is a parts list, things you're going to need. Um, a computer, a smartphone or a tablet, pencils, paper, tape measure, ruler, tape, string, rubber bands, um, large ball, small ball. And then I try and give you some options. Uh, some people go, I'm a college student. I do not have a basketball lying around. Well, maybe you have a t-shirt that you can wad up or a pair of blue jeans you can put a couple rubber bands around and that can work as a, a large ball. Maybe you don't have Play-Doh, but maybe you have a squishy piece of bread that you can roll up or a fruit roll up or something like that. Colored pencils, crayons, markers, highlighters. I try and give you some options and you are very creative. Human beings are very creative. Part of science is problem solving. And if you do not have one of these objects, maybe, just maybe, you can think of something else on your own. So that's part of the joy and the challenge of science. I'm going to ask you to buy a planisphere. That's one of the pieces of equipment, and you can get that through the bookstore. Um, and I have one lab where we're going to use astronomy apps. Now there are free apps that you that I will recommend for that lab. If you choose to buy a couple of astronomy apps, I have a couple recommendations for both Apple and Android. But uh, if you get into astronomy and you're like me, I own like 12 of them because they're really, 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 really fun. Uh, stopwatch, cardboard, elastic, and you can use the elastic waistband of a pair of shorts or running pants or something like that. That'll work. Um, um, safety pins or paper clips or something like that. So the parts list 
for doing these online labs is pretty simple and it's pretty common stuff. When you are ready to start the class, you can start it in one of two ways. You can click down here where it says Chapter 1, Introduction to Astronomy. But most of the time when you enter the course, I'm going to recommend that you go to Modules. Because we are going to have, um, in the span of this course, we're going to have 15 modules. And they're, they're divided up by week. So you're going to do one per week. And the only thing that's going to be different is the fact that there is going to be one module that says constellation practice and we'll talk about that in a moment. So let's start talking about week one. If you enter the week one module, um, it's some text, a uh, little bit of information. This is exactly where we started before, but what's different between this and the home page? See this next button in the bottom? If you go to modules, there's that little next button and you hit that and it leads you into the course. So first thing is a discussion and this is getting to know yourself. So this is a graded assignment. Only share what you feel comfortable sharing and I'll let you read the details on your own. Um, next, next thing I'm going to ask you to do is the, the information for this class. You are going to get it from two places. One is from reading the textbook and the other is from videos made by me. And these videos are embedded in the course. They are numbered A for Astronomy 1-2. A for Astronomy 1-3, and I already have them preloaded in the course. You just click and they will take you to the YouTube videos and you can just watch them as so. Every once in a while I have extra external videos that are in play and those are already pre-embedded in the course. And I try and bring in some cool things that I can't just show you without um, doing a big song and dance and there's so many wonderful explanations and demonstrations out on YouTube. After you've got some knowledge, I'm going to ask you to complete a study guide. Now the study guides, you're going to have one per week to do. The study guides are right out of your textbook and they're keyed directly to your textbook. If you want a copy of them, you can click this link right here. You can do one of two things. You can save it to your computer, type in the answers, and then upload it to Canvas in order to get a grade. And that is one of the ways that you can do it. You can actually upload that file to Canvas in order to submit it. The other option some people like, and I admit I'm a pencil and paper kind of girl, I like working with pencil and paper, is I highly recommend that you get some sort of a scanning app. You can write all over your papers and then scan it. Cam Scanner is an application that um, many students like. It's been recommended to me by a lot of students. Here is one little video I did not make, but I found it on YouTube that explains how to scan in batch mode. So you have one document to upload using Cam Scanner, and uh, that way you can write everything on paper, scan it is in as a document, and upload that. So that is an option as well. So you'll have one study guide per week. The other thing you're going to have once per week is we're going to talk about constellations. Now, so for this next section, for the first week, we're going to talk some more notes about what constellations are. There's actually definitions and how many there are. We're going to talk about star charts and apparent magnitude, what exactly is a Messier number, a few more notes about measuring angles, and then if we keep going next is our first lab. Again, the lab, you can print it, type in your answers, or print it, um, excuse me, save it, type in your answers, or you may print it, uh, write in your answers, scan it in in a batch file mode, and upload that for a grade. At the end of every single module, you will have a weekly set of constellations that we are studying. Uh, there are 44 total constellations that I want you to learn in the span of the entire course. That means that there are going to be three or four per week. I have a little, it's about a five minute video every week. We talk about just those constellations. The first week is going to be Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and Cancer. And those constellations are fair game on our quiz. Every week you're going to have a five minute quiz. Yes, it is time. It is 10 questions, two points each, and you can take that quiz, submit it, automatically will be graded, and that's how that is going to work for the quizzes. 
when you're done with that, there's a little wrap up, double checking that you've turned in everything, and then on you go to the next module. Now the next module is Module C1, Constellation Practice. This is not a separate weekly module, week two module. We go back here. Week two module is actually what you're going to do in week two on light. But I put in Constellation Practice as a separate standalone module, and here's why. You're going to be learning 44 constellations through the entire course, and some people really like doing this and they want some extra practice. So here is a list of all the constellations you're going to learn through the course. Here are some constellation flashcards that you may print, cut out, and use as flashcards to help you learn them. And then I have collected from information I've got from a variety of students and things I've discovered myself, here are some apps and games online that you may use to learn those constellations. All of these games and apps are totally um, not graded and not required. I just provide them here because some students like using these to help learn their constellations. Hey, if you're waiting at the dentist's office and you're going to just play Doodle Jump or something, why don't you play a constellation game and you're practicing your astronomy um, and it'll help you learn and it's kind of fun as well. All right. There is an observing project that's going to be due at the end of the summer. There's a separate video explaining the observing project right there. And then onward to week two. So that's just a little tour of the entire course. Every week, every module has exactly the same rhythm and flow. Please ask questions if you have them as they come up. I know online learning is a little tricky, but I'm always here to help. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.